We've done a few cases of torques where the force is sort of perpendicular to the motion. Now we're going to do it at an arbitrary angle. And we're going to do it carefully to make sure we get the sign right, because you've got to get that right. And we're going to treat the vectors very carefully. So we're going to look at how torque depends on angle. And we're going to do it with this hinged rod. So this is not the greatest hinge in the world, but it's what I came up with quickly. I have a rod here, and it can be horizontal like that. And if I let it go, it falls. And the question is, what is the torque on this due to the force of gravity at various positions? So we hold it in these positions. OK, so let's do hinged rod horizontal. All right, let's see. So if we're going to draw it, well, it's a horizontal rod like that. And we're going to say all the rods have length L and mass M, which I can just write there. And they're hinged at one end. So if this is going to match that, yes, we'll put the hinge right here. So at one end is the axis of rotation. So all we got to do now is calculate uh, the torque. So we know that torque is R cross F, the force that's creating the torque. Now this is where we're going to get the sign right. We want to think carefully about this. So we need a coordinate system if we're going to get the sign right. And to be traditional, I'll put Z perpendicular uh, to the board here. So we'll go ahead and say that's X up is Y. And if you check your coordinate system, X cross Y is Z. So Z is out of the board. There we go. OK, so now we look at it and we say R cross F. We've got to think, what does that really mean? So R is the vector from where the, the axis of rotation um, to where the force is applied. Here, the force is gravitational. So it's mg, and we know that acts at the center of mass. So mg at the middle is the force pushing down. Therefore, R is like that. So for this very first one, it's also perpendicular, like the ones we already did. We aren't actually doing it at an interesting angle yet, but it's a good exercise in visualizing our r and our force vector mg. Let's go ahead and write it real formal-like here. So it would be r cross f. Um, r is in the x direction, so that would be the magnitude is l over 2, and that's i hat. And you'd cross that with uh, the force which is mg, and what is that? That's in the negative y hat, minus mg j hat. So you could do that in vector notation, or you could do the magnitudes and the angle. So most problems, you just do the magnitudes and the angle. So the torque is equal to, let's see, the magnitude there is L over 2. The magnitude there is mg. And now the sine of the angle between them, sine. And this is where you got to get the, uh, the direction correct. Because you say, well, it's clear it's 90 degrees. But is it positive 90 degrees or is it negative 90 degrees? And also, how do we get that 90 degrees? You put them tail to tail. You draw R, and then F is down. Right? So there's R, and there's F. And you get the direction by going R to F. Since it's r cross f, we start here, and we go to there. And since we went clockwise 90 degrees, that's actually negative 90 degrees. Ah, so the sine of negative 90 is actually negative 1. So what that does is it says the answer, the torque, is minus L over 2 uh, mg. And its direction, since it's negative, and we did it this way, it's in the negative z direction. Right? So we do right-hand rule, and we would say, let's see, if we apply the right-hand rule here, r cross f, yeah, it would be into the board. We got a negative number because we put a negative sine 90, and yes, that's into the board. So if we wanted to give it with a vector, we could even put the k hat on there. So the component is negative, points into the board. Now let's do that. And of course, we can confirm that yes, there is a torque. And since there's a torque, it experiences an angular acceleration. And there it goes. Very nice. Now we're going to do a case in between. Now we're going to do a case like this. At some angle, let's do 30 degrees between the horizontal and the rod. So let's do hinged rod 30 degrees. 
Let's see, okay, so now I'm gonna draw it where here's the horizontal, and here is the rod, and it's hinged up here at this end, and that's 30 degrees. So if we draw our vectors on here, we're gonna do R cross F. Uh, F, the force, is still gonna act in the middle, mg down. R is from the axis of rotation to the point the force is applied. There's R. All right, so then we say torque is R cross F. And now we don't want to get into breaking this into components for an XY coordinate system. Let's just go with the magnitudes. All right, so the magnitude here, it's still L over 2. There's no angle part to that. It's always from the point of the rotation is at the end of the rod. The force is always applied at the middle of the rod. That's always going to be L over 2. The magnitude of the force is always going to be mg. So in these problems, the only thing to think about is the angle. Uh, in this case, we want the sine of the angle between them, so we could draw it again tail to tail and say here's r, and uh, that's the tail r, and here's mg, and we're going from here to here. From that vector to that vector is 60 degrees, not 30 degrees. So the problem you're given, the angle you're given in the problem might not be the one you need to do a cross product. So in this case, it's 60 and it's negative 60. Right, we're going clockwise to get from R to MG, minus 60 degrees. Yes, that is what I got. And uh, the sine of minus 60 is minus 1 half. So minus 1 half there is minus L over 4 MG is the torque. And if you wanted to call it a vector, you could put k hat because it's in the minus vertical or uh, perpendicular direction, and z we said was out. So negative means in. Right hand rule, r cross f, sure enough, it says the torque should be in. We could also check this by saying, is the torque less when you drop the angle? And the answer is yes. One way I can tell is that I can feel it takes a little bit less torque pushing at the end here oh, than it does here. You can't tell because you're just watching. But one way you can tell is if I release it from here, oh, it goes so fast. But if I release it from here, less torque driving the motion, less energy goes a little slower. So you can tell that this one should be smaller, and sure enough it is, by a factor of two. This is L over two, this is L over four. Let's do one more. Hinged rod down. All right, so this is the case. Here's your horizontal, but the poor rod is just hanging like that. Very sad. Free to rotate. Uh, let's draw our vectors. So the force is applied here, mg. The r vector is there, r. And we say torque is r cross f. And it's R, which is still L over 2. It's F, which is still mg. But the sine is now the sine of 0 degrees. If you draw those tail to tail, they're right on top of each other. 0 degrees. The sine is 0 is 0. It has no torque. And sure enough, when it's hanging straight down, there's no torque driving the motion. The slight angle you see is because my very poor job of making a hinge. It's not really a hinge. It's sort of two. Uh, angle clasps holding it together. But if it was a true hinge, it would hang straight down. So that's just a very simple setup, but some of the detailed angles you have to think about when you calculate torques.